Hi, I'm Stefania Palmieri, Registered Dietitian. I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about coffee, how you can fit it into your lifestyle, and what the latest research has to say on the subject. Society's love of coffee is pretty obvious with nearly a coffee shop on every street corner. Most people start their day with a cup of coffee to perk up their nervous system, wake their brain up, and give them a jolt of energy. Some people find that caffeine or coffee helps to relax their digestive muscles and actually triggers regular bowel movements, while other people are negatively affected by coffee and find it disturbs their sleep and triggers a short-term increase in their blood pressure. A study recently conducted by the Harvard School of Public Health examined the link between coffee consumption, risk of death, and disease. What they found was that for the average consumer, the more coffee you drink, the lower your risk of mortality. And this was even true in decaffeinated coffee drinkers. When it came specifically to disease risk, they found that coffee drinkers had the lowest risks of neurological disease, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and even suicide. As a consumer, here's what you need to know. This study was based on observational data where researchers looked at the health records of various participants over time. So what we know is that this correlation between coffee and disease and death is simply correlational. We're just looking at a connection. It won't be able to prove cause and effect. The other thing to know is that even though the body can safely tolerate up to 400 milligrams of caffeine or essentially four cups of coffee daily, that doesn't mean everyone should. So what we know is that caffeine metabolism is largely genetically based. For people that are slow caffeine metabolizers, more than two cups of coffee actually can increase their risk of heart attack. What we also know from the Harvard study is that smokers did not necessarily see the same benefits from drinking coffee because of the strong connections between smoking, lung cancer, and cardiovascular disease risk. So coffee might not be the magic bullet for everyone. As a dietitian, here's what I recommend to my clients. If you don't drink coffee, don't feel like you need to start based on this study alone. There are plenty other healthy behaviors that you can take on to help keep you healthy, lower your risk of mortality, and reduce your risk of disease. Stay active, eat well, quit smoking, and moderate your alcohol intake. If you are a coffee drinker, keep to no more than 400 milligram, or essentially four cups of coffee a day, and switch to decaffeinated at the fifth cup and thereafter. Keep in mind the size of the cup that you order whenever you are at a coffee shop. Mind what you put in your drink. Things like sugar, syrup, creams, non-dairy creamers tend to negate the benefits of coffee, in which case, what's the point? If you feel that coffee may be negatively affecting your health, disturbing your sleep, affecting bone density, triggering digestive issues, and so forth, speak to a registered dietitian. We may need to assess your needs to tailor your caffeine intake specifically to you. All in all, the Harvard study suggests there may be potential health benefits from drinking coffee. If you don't drink coffee or cannot tolerate it, do not feel like you need to start. For those that do, keep within the recommended amounts daily, knowing that it's one more thing you can do to take care of your health.